Hello, I am the Flawless Walrus, and welcome to another Death Battle Prediction video. But first, we have the Doctor versus Rick. Uh, this episode was fairly good. Um, I don't really have very many complaints about it. Uh, the jokes were good. The writing was good. Um, didn't make me like Rick and Morty at all, but that was kind of an uphill battle to begin with. So, uh, but I. I did quite like the uh, section on uh, the Doctor, though, so that's definitely great. Um, the battle itself was stellar. Uh, I know that they did, I guess, lowball the Doctor a little bit, and a lot of his, like, crazier weaponry, like, they gave him the D-Mat, but, like, if they gave him the moment, then it still would have been uh, even more of a stomp. They gave it to him in the black box, but, like, yeah, either way, it didn't end up mattering too much. He had so many different ways to survive. Um, the pacing of the fight itself was also really, really good. I actually uh, found myself really quite enjoying the fight because of a lot of details and stuff that were thrown in. For one, the the Weeping Angel scene, that was fucking funny. Um, the, the fact that they had... This is the first time that there's ever been a death battle winner where the the winner didn't actually throw any attacks. You could argue that the Sonic Screwdriver was an attack, but that's more disabling enemy gear. He acted defensively the whole fight. Even the final blow with the D-Mat, it was from Rick taking it. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting that they kept him as a pacifist throughout the whole fight, and he won. Uh, it's pretty excellent. Um, then there was the, the animation I really didn't have any issues with. Lots of fun cameos in the background, and um, I found that the combat itself was fluid. The Doctor wins by running away, which is very in character for him. And uh, yeah, just general, really good time. There's also a lot of nods that uh, you would only really get if you are a fan of the thing. Like that Screaming Sun, you're apparently only really gonna know what that is if you watch Rick and Morty. Though apparently, I guess there's not really that much to understand there. Um, there's also one that, even at the current moment, I'm not exactly sure on, but I'm, I'm, as far as I know, it is actually a reference to uh, an aspect of the TARDIS, when there's all the Ricks that are just fucking up the inside of the TARDIS, and he looks and he sees the, uh, the one that's underneath the terminal, and that kind of makes him realize something. Like, I guess he wouldn't be able to be in there if the TARDIS, uh, was the, ac it was the actual control room. So... Yeah, there's just a lot of great details, uh, and then we come to the next time. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm in any way excited to see Superman vs. Goku 3, um, but there is actually one aspect that I think uh, bears uh, keeping in mind as far as the fact that, yes, all the people who've been sticking with the show from the beginning, we know that they've done this before. It's been well-treaded. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that, that those fights were about eight years ago. Um, cue rapidly aging Solid Snake gif here. Um, so with it being eight years ago, there actually has been quite a bit that's happened in the meantime uh, that warrants potentially revisiting it um, as well. The other thing with it having been eight years ago, the YouTube culture that has basically grown since uh, means that there's a lot of people who are doing reactions and things like that that haven't actually gone through the entire backlog. Um, there's a lot of people that I've seen doing reactions that have said that they're surprised Death Battle hadn't done it before with uh, Superman vs. Goku, or that they're really excited that they're finally doing it. Um, yeah, so it's kind of an interesting factor that n some people just don't realize that it has been done. So an updated uh, retreading of it is potentially a good idea. Doesn't really change the fact that I'm pretty sure Superman just still completely murders. Um, so the two things that are being lauded as the, like, this is what makes it different part is basically um, Heroes is being in included for Goku, so Xenoverse is free games. We're gonna have, ooh boy, our Infinity uh, uh, Goku, essentially. But here's the kicker. They're also using, for Superman, uh, Infinite Frontiers, which, uh, for those who don't know, uh, you know all those times that people bitched about, uh, for example, 
Green Lantern where they said, oh, they included a bunch of different versions of him and stuff like that, even though all of the versions used would fall under Rebirth, which means it would have been fine for that singular instance anyway. But you know how there was even the discussion about how, oh, different versions being put together? That's not a thing anymore. Infinite Frontiers is basically a thing that said that pretty much all prior published material is essentially canon now, even contradicting shit. So there's multiple people who all have the same superhero name all existing at once. If someone is from two different places, both are canon. Like, it's the fucking wild west of canon, so anything that's happened is basically free game. Uh, I'm curious if that's going to include the strongest iterations of Superman, such as uh, Cosmic Armor, uh, Thought Robot Superman. If that's included, then Goku's just fucking boned. He's kind of boned either way, because for the most part, I think even if you use heroes against, like, Rebirth Superman, I'm pretty sure he still has the infinite infinities that completely kill the Xenoverse stuff. Like, to put it into context, they had, essentially, Archie Silver beat uh, Xenoverse Trunks, and then... Archie Sonic is pretty heavily considered superior to Archie Silver, and he got his ass beat by standard, like, Rebirth Flash. So it's not exactly a good argument to say, like, oh yeah, this person beat this person, so that means that they beat this person. Um when it comes to this kind of thing, like, because usually death battles have some varying aspects between episodes. But, in this case, it really does say a lot, because the reason why Archie uh, Silver won was because the infant there were more infinities than uh, what Xenoverse has. So, I personally don't think it's going to help Goku that much. We're about to have uh, Superman bury his ass for the third time in a row. Which means that Goku will be the only person to go into the O2 Club. Classic Oxygen Club. Uh, that's, yeah, so, anyway. Uh, there's not too much that I'm going to comment on, because I don't think there's very much that needs to be discussed. Uh, we will see what ends up being the finale. And for the record, I'm glad that this was not the finale. Um... Because if this was the, the finale, that would have been brutal to have fucking three Gokus between two season finales. <sighs> I would That would have been a nightmare just to finishing off on that. Right, well, um, I will see you guys after the next one, and have yourselves a great one.